Hey everybody, welcome back to the Medbros channel. So today I wanted to do a video about what are the best resources that a first year medical student can utilize to effectively study for their classes and for boards. Because I know myself, I had to go through a bunch of different resources. When I got to medical school, I was, you know, you hear about first aid, pathoma, uh, firecracker, and you're like, what are these things? Because they're just names to you. Okay, so you're a first year medical student, you're just starting out, you're a little baby student, and you have no idea what resources to use. And you're going to these panels that are telling you, you know, get your first aid, get your firecracker, get your things, and you're just like, you buy them all and you're just sitting on them, and you have no idea when to use them and uh, what classes they're effective for. So let's get right down to it. So the first thing you need, in my opinion, this is a slept on resource. People are sleeping on this resource. And that is Firecracker. Firecracker is such a good uh, learning tool that you can use and it has practice questions and the best way to use it, I'm gonna go over the best way to use it. A lot of people, when they look at Firecracker, they just see flashcards and it's a lot more than that. It's actually a primary resource to learn the highest yield stuff. The way I use Firecracker is so you get your account, you get it all set up and then you go to the tab, study something specific. And there's a bunch of different topics and it's broken down by like anatomy, physiology, like the fundamentals are at the top. And then you get more down into the systems-based stuff with cardiovascular, respiratory, GI. And what you wanna be doing as a first year medical student is making sure that you really dissect that study something specific section about the fundamentals of firecracker. So you can go there for your anatomy, for your high yield anatomy, for your physiology, for your immunology, like, what it is is essentially is first aid with a couple of high yield extra stuff added there with the ability to quiz yourself right after you read the section. And I found that super valuable. It really helped me focus on what I should be focusing my studies on for board. So this is where it's gonna deviate a little bit. All the resources I'm mentioning are really geared toward board success. Um, if you're trying to ace your classes in medical school, which again, I don't recommend that either. I'm, that's a totally separate video, which we can go into that. But if you're trying to get straight A's in your classes, you're gonna have to study your professor's PowerPoints, unfortunately. Those really long, 120, just garbagely put together PowerPoints. Um, and you're gonna have to maybe even listen to the lecture sometimes to see what they're emphasizing to be the most important thing. Cause they're gonna make your tests most of the time and they're gonna test you and, and uh, you're gonna have to know their little facts. And I kind of made the mistake, I wish I could go back and I would have a lot more free time, especially my first semester. And that is to make it a more board uh, specific study track. So while I did end up like acing all my classes, I spent a lot of time studying. A lot of that stuff that I tried to memorize from my professors, it's, it's all gone. Like it was, a lot of it is irrelevant long-term. And as a medical student, you have to be able to triage. You have to know what's the most important thing. So. It depends if your classes are pass, no pass, if your school has a grading system, if you're trying to get like in the top five or whatever, um, that's where it's kind of going to deviate. So if you want to get A in your class, you're going to have to study professor stuff. And say your class is studying DNA, right? All the students are learning biochemistry and DNA and all that stuff. You can go to the section Firecracker and it has a very concise page on everything you need to know about DNA and you know histones and all that stuff is neatly put there for the highest yield stuff that you're gonna see on the boards. And then you can do practice questions on it immediately after. I think that's the most effective way to be learning. I think Firecracker is a slept on resource by a lot of people. I know a lot of my classmates don't use it. Um, but yeah, that is my number one resource I can recommend to a first year. Uh, and then if you do that throughout, and at first it's like so many questions, like 10,000 questions and there's so many topics, uh, but you'll slowly start chipping away at it by the end of your second year. You'll, I had it almost nearly done. All right, let's move on to my next favorite resource. And I really enjoyed using this resource and I found it actually to be fun at times. Like I would look forward to it and that is Sketchy. Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm. Sketchy Path gets a little iffy. I don't know about Sketchy Path. I don't, I haven't used it much. Um, I wouldn't doubt that it's helpful in terms of just listening to it um, to get the high yield facts, but Sketchy Path, I don't know. It's, it's you gotta understand pathology. For micro and farm, I cannot recommend Sketchy more than words can be put together. Like Sketchy is necessary for you to memorize micro and farm. Like I, I barely got any micro and farm questions wrong on the boards. Like if you look at the scale, it was just like all the way um, to the right. 
And that is, I solely uh, thank Sketchy for that. With raw memorization, if I ask you three, four months down the, the line, tell me about Legionella, I would be surprised if you could tell me it's associated with hyponatremia, confusion, diarrhea, um, fluoroquinolones are the treatment, uh, it's lower low, low is usually affected, um, there's Pontiac's disease and all this stuff. Like if you can start just naming all that stuff off the top of your head, that's really impressive. Those people are probably gifted in memorization. But for someone like me, I'm literally just memorizing and, and visualizing that ship that they're on. And um, the dude used a little silver ship and it's a silver stain or whatever. And, and there's like a bucket of shit hitting the guy's head. Like that is what I'm memorizing. That's how I'm memorizing it. That's how I'm visualizing it. That's how I'm recalling it. And a thing that people should know before they write off sketchy and they may, might have watched the video like once or twice and been like, this is not working for me. I would say you have to watch each video like five times and to really like just know it down cold. And the way I did it is like after the first two times, you can literally put sketchy to like nine times speed. You don't have to listen to anything. You can just watch the pictures fly by and uh, it'll be just grilled into your head. So I think sketchy, sketchy is essential for drugs and bugs. So the way I use it is anytime a professor mentioned a microbe or anytime a professor, professor mentioned a drug, watch the sketchy on it. And then just over time, you'll have watched it again and again and again, and it, the recall will be just spot on. So the next resource that you need as a first year, you need Pathoma. And Pathoma is, it, it's a legendary resource. This is, Dr. Sitar is a legendary man. He has put together a really simplified version of pathology. It's so like well explained and it's said in a way that makes sense. I still remember what he said in one of the, in one of the early videos. He said, I'm just sitting here talking off the top of my head. Um, you don't really need to, you know, you should have it down like cold like that and you should be able to just talk about it off the top of your head. And that's how I kind of uh, molded that's how I kind of framed the way I wanted to learn medicine is I wanted to know the material in such a way that I could just talk about it off the top of my head. So anytime I was studying, I was making sure that anything I was learning, I could just verbalize and, and just go off on it and just talk about it. Let me just stop right here. And the confusion starts coming where you're like, when should I use these resources? So firecracker day one, like I said, you learn the material, you go learn on firecracker. Sketchy, you want to do it anytime you hear a bug or drug. I don't care if it's in your microbe section. I don't care if you're learning a drug like in like whatever immunology section. The second a drug or bug comes up, try to find it on Sketchy. Go on their website, uh, search whatever bug or drug it is and see if they have a Sketchy on it and then just watch it right there and then. Pathoma. So Pathoma is a little iffy on when to start using it. It's really, really good for uh, obviously pathology when you start learning, when your teacher starts doing lectures on like hyperplasia and, um, and uh, dysplasia and things like that, that's your indication to pull out the pathoma. Do, that's one of the first chapters. Go ahead and do it. I think a good thing to know is after your first semester, you should have the first five chapters of pathoma down cold. Like you should know all the way up to that neoplasia section um, what he's talking about and you should be able to verbalize it and she should be able to say, you know, all the steps of margination, all that stuff. It's really during your systems when all this structure, once you're done with the fundamentals, then everything starts making sense. When you start getting to the systems where it's cardiovascular, respiratory, GI, then you have a really clear framework of how to tackle it. You want to study the anatomy of the system you're in and then you want to study the physiology of the system you're in and then you want to study the pathology of the system you're in and then you want to study the pharmacology of the system you're in. So. You want to study how, what you're dealing with, the anatomy. You want to deal with how it works. And then you want to deal with what happens when things go wrong. And then you want to go over the drugs to treat it. So like medicine is more about studying effectively, knowing what you need to know, what you kind of can like understand and then leave in the dust for, or even leave for later. And then uh, moving on and getting that good step one score. <laughs> Is, that's the truth, okay? It's what it's all about, getting that step one score. And then the real learning can happen once you're done with all these tests and you're out there and you're, you need to learn to your heart's delight, you can do that all on your own time. There ain't no time for that right now. You gotta get down to it. Okay, the next resource, the one every medical student has, you need it, you, you will use it, it's first aid. 
And first aid, I kind of went over it before, guys. Make sure you look at my how to memorize, how I memorize everything in medical school video. Uh, and you can see my first aid was just annotated. It was just like, it's just full of stuff written in there. And that's the best way to use first aid. So say you're learning a firecracker or you're learning something in sketchy or you're learning something off your school's PowerPoint or whatever it is. What you want to do is you always want to have first aid there open to the section that you're learning about. And then you can write in the margins any high yield stuff that's missing from the high yield stuff in first aid. I think that's the best way to use it. And then, and then you can just come back to it when you're about to study for boards, like maybe a couple months before boards, go ahead and do a nice read through of first aid and it has your annotations and it's ready to go. I think that's the most effective way to use first aid. Um, I don't think first aid makes a lot of sense for you as a first year to, or a first semester or even second semester to just be sitting there and reading first aid. I don't think that has any value um, I think Firecracker fills in a lot of the holes that First Aid is missing. It's more structured, it has questions, um, and of course you do need your, your school's framework. So like, understand the gist of where your professor is going with their PowerPoints, um, and that will all give you a framework and then you can just build around it using your resources. I think that's the best way to tackle it. Um, what I don't recommend is trying to kill yourself. Uh, if you're out of school, especially that's pass no pass, try to kill yourself trying to ace all your classes and study all your professor's PowerPoints because I mean, in the long term, a lot of the stuff, I mean, it feels like you need to know everything, but a lot of the stuff will not show up anywhere in your career, period. And really, the key here is to keep it simple. You might be like, my first semester, all I need is Firecracker with a little bit of Sketchy and a little bit of um, Pathoma. And the answer is, yeah. Yeah, that's probably all you need. Um, if you master that stuff, you are on track to succeed in knowing what you need to know for the boards. Um, along with that, you can spend time, you know, studying your professor's PowerPoint so you don't fail their exams. Now, in terms of if you want to be ahead, ahead, ahead of the game, then what you can do is you can get your UWorld early. And what you can do is after every section, let's say you're doing cardio or something like that, after every section, you can do a 40 question block on UWorld on cardio and dissect it and study what you got wrong. and. Um, if you want to be really, really ahead of the game. But I don't think that's necessary. Uh, it all depends on where your goals are at. Um, if you get through UWorld early, you can do another question bank, which is one of the things that I think is what pushes people above it to succeed is if they do more than just UWorld. Yeah, best of luck to all the first years. I know it's a confusing time in the beginning and it's super rough, uh, but you'll get through it. It's not that bad once you get the hang of it. And if you do it smart, you will have free time, you will be able to go out, you will be able to relax. If you're not studying your professor's 150 PowerPoints or memorize every slide, that's not the way to do it. So um, unless you want to be that guy, then go ahead and do it. Um, you never know, you know, just people are just people trying to do neurosurgery out here. So make sure you guys subscribe for more helpful videos. Make sure you guys like and share this video with your fellow medical students, help them out. And I hope this stuff was helpful. I hope you guys have more of a clear understanding of when to use these resources. And I will catch you guys in the next one.